Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Monique Macri. If you're new here, Karibu Sana. And if it's your first time, welcome. Uh, he's a midwife. My name, you know me. So uh, I've been doing a pregnancy series. And we left, we left off where I talked about my labor story, which was so traumatizing. Jesus Christ, I wish, I wish there was better guidance. But then at the end of the day, I came to realize it's because these stories, women don't talk about it. Women keep the labor and delivery process as such a secret in a way that when new moms experience that, they feel like, they, for me, I felt violated. I, I'm sure I'll never share, but you watched my video, right? See, I'm justified. No one told me someone is going to do the V's. No one told me this is going to be done to me. So my my purpose with this channel, and especially this specific series, I want a man or a woman watching this video to get my own account of the delivery story so that in case they get to experience a story that is similar to mine, it won't take getting like off guard. But then at the end of the day, mine was difficult. I know there are also a lot of women who have very easy deliveries, right? So do not be scared. This was just me. This was just me. And I hope the next one is going to be different. So I finished off where uh, the labor, like labor equipment, yeah? So this was the delivery part. So um, I felt the urge to poop. <laughs> Me, I didn't know the urge to poop means baby is going to is coming out. But yeah, the nurse had told me when you feel the urge to poop, please do not poop. Please do not poop. You call the nurse, and I was like, why shouldn't I? Why should why should I poop? You get. So when I say this, I want uh, after I finish this explanation, I want you to tell them why you shouldn't poop. And let me tell you, Alvi, you know you you are a man. You never experience this. <laughs> That urge to poop is usually very strong. It's too strong. So I said, "What? I'm like, I'm going to. I'm, I can't hold it anymore. So why should interman poop when they feel the urge to poop?" Okay, number one, when you know the urge to poop, it means that now the baby is getting into your pelvis and trying to get out from the pelvis. Mm -hmm. So when you feel like you want to poop, already your large intestines have already been pressed. So the moment it has been pressed, yeah. it tries to, it is, it's emptying itself. So the moment you try to go and poop, yeah. number one, you're going to at risk of getting cervical tear. Yeah. The service cannot tear. Maybe you're not yet fully directed. So you imagine going through the lip and then cervical tear, you end up in theater. Yeah, up in theater. So it's not worth that's, it. It. That's, it's yeah. not worth it. That's why we tell people, like, you have a breathing technique. When you feel like you want to bear down, mm -hmm. just take a deep breath. During that urge of poop, yeah, you don't have to push it. It helps. Yeah, it just takes it. You know, we to try this thing wrong. If it doesn't work, okay, I know. Okay, this one you can take. You're it. there. <laughs> your account. You can find it to me. <laughs> uh -huh. So you find that the moment you get a certain amount there, you end up in theater. As we all know, we all know that theater has its own consequences. The side effects we know, not all the are good. Mm -hmm. Then number two, we also fear that you might. Fall a baby down. Maybe you're fully related, yes. Mm -hmm. So when you go, you feel that urge. Okay, let, let, let me interject to the because you already said a woman feels the urge to poop simply because baby yeah. has moved, is pressing, is pressing on your the bowels. Yeah, your, your bowels. bowels, yeah. So, when the baby so it is pressing, the position of the baby that makes you yeah, to feel the poop. And that means like, you feel like the urge, like you want to go for a short poop. Oh, okay. So it's something that comes hand in hand. Uh -huh. Yeah, and that's why we advise most of the mothers when they never always try to go for that short call. Mm -hmm. It allows it, it makes it, it allows space for the baby now to engage well. Oh, and so, so, the yeah, the blood was... so when you uh -huh. release the bladder, mm -hmm. we have no space. Number two, you also fear getting a tear, you write on bladder injury or you write on injury because once you have a full bladder the baby is pushing your bladder, it might pass. You know me, when I was during my labor, I couldn't walk. My thighs were weak. They felt like they were tearing apart. Walking was such a problem. So me, I used to avoid going to the toilet. And then, for some reason, it used to be like ending is in the toilet, the labor increased. So, <laughs> so they had to put a carpet up. Which is more psychological. But you don't have to get yes, more, more I do. carpet away. I do think it was ecological. Yeah. I didn't know better. Mm -hmm. Do you know how that thing is irritating? Look at it. Well, it's. I'm going to enjoy it. Maybe. It's painful. It's painful. 
So, okay, I think one important point that I need to insist on really is that a woman is usually told to pee as many times as possible. Most of the times we don't know why. Yeah. So, you need to pee because number one, you risk a bladder yeah. fracture. Yeah. Trauma because the blood is already full and baby is also present. Yeah. Number two, you need to create more space for baby to, to continue to descend. descend. To descend yeah. There is another one. You see, you see three reasons. Okay, you might even get, you know, in the trauma, you can pass the trauma, and trauma, the blood trauma, and then uh, maybe you might end up mm -hmm. having a uh, urinal incontinence because already the red has been pressed, so you can't control it. Mm -hmm. So you just be passing your red throat. Wow. So that's why you have to for you see, we need a <laughs> Let me lock the door, but continue talking. Yeah. Continue telling so, them another thing they need to so talk. After feeling the urge to poop, and it recurred a point, I told the nurse, Aki, I can't hold it anymore. So they did a VE. A VE is a virtual examination, and you use your fingers. By the way, you need to get a technology in me. So, I'm telling the importance of the fingers. Ah, okay, fine. Yeah. You will. Or maybe you can tell us because me, okay. I Okay, you see the fingers, mm -hmm. it's called like a, a, an old ultrasound. When I use my fingers, number one, I'll locate your cervix. Mm -hmm. Number two, I'll not the presenting part. Once I use, maybe I use a machine. Machine is a user probe, it's user, user dependent. Maybe I'm not good using this machine yet, then I use it. Maybe the presentation of the baby was not the right presentation. But when I use my fingers, I'm is that sure they, 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 they feel it. They feel it. Maybe I might touch the baby's eyes and I tell you now this is a first presentation. And you can't continue the number. You can imagine me. No, I'll never complain again. Because yeah. I usually ask myself, why can't you get a new technology? It's because not. robots and machines will never replace it's what you feel yeah, with the eyes. Okay, interesting. So now, in, in my fika place, I told the nurse I can't hold it anymore. So she did the VE and then she told me, you're almost. So what she did, she tried to push the cervix and then up to like a place where it was 10 centimeters and she told me that we can do it. So here my question is, if you have the ability to push that cervix to 10 centimeters, why do you wait for us to keep on? Feeling the urge to poop, which we can't actually remove. Okay. I mean, when you're like I'm nine centimeters, can you just? Okay, there's something like uh, we check for. We don't only check for the cervical dilatation. Mm -hmm. We also have the descent of the baby. Okay. In layman's language, you say that we are attacking in that surface. To my petition, you are kicking your own The moment you are the you, the baby can now get the space. Oh. So the moment at which I attack you, you are not just from getting what you are not content. So the moment you see a nurse trying to enter his fingers or her fingers in, mm -hmm. and maybe doing the sweeping, it's trying, okay, it's just to make the service relax mm -hmm. in short. So basically, a nurse usually knows when they can, they can push or they not. Push so push basically, as a mom, just be patient. Just be patient. Just be patient. I know it's an uncomfortable thing, but mm -hmm. no one enjoys it for you. It's true. But you enjoy the products. The product, yeah. You know, once you deliver, mm -hmm. the pain is gone, you're just there. Okay. okay. So now, the cervix, I have been assisted to, you know, push mm -hmm. the cervix up to 10 centimeters. And then I've been given the pushing position. And I think we need to go to the delivery woman on this side, please, and show the moms uh -huh. the right okay. pushing technique. Because for myself, I facilitate lamas. I usually tell my patients the right pushing techniques. So I feel if we do both of us, it's going to be better. So, so to look at your position mm -hmm. Now I'm on the delivery bed and I'm here pushing. Let me tell you, they were really good with me, but they never taught me how to push right until the doctor intervened. So I used to put, <laughs> so until I was told, you need to push as though you're going for a long call. Right? So you take in a deep breath, yeah. then you push, push as though you're going for a long call. Yeah. Again, I think that you can explain you can help us understand why that breath is better compared to you know screaming and all that. Not now, Alvin. <laughs> yeah. So after I tried pushing, the baby wasn't coming out at first. And when I was pushing, I I would feel like I'm forming stars. Okay, in case you say non as stars. <laughs> like, I'm forming st No, how do I put it? But you get it, guys. You get it. Like, I used to see stars. I used to feel like I'm shaking. Was there something I could have done to prevent that feeling? Because anytime I would push, I would feel like I'm getting out of this world and going to a world full of stars and my body was shivering and shaking. It was 
Then after a while, Pusha used to feel so weak and so spent. Was there something I could have done to push in a more relaxed way, I guess, minus the pushing technique? Okay, whatever I mean, I advise mothers who are in labor, always to take small, frequent fluid, which is warm, full of sugar or glucose. You see, now the moment you went to push, already you are screaming. Mm. Once you are screaming, <laughs> you've used up all your energy. There's nothing you're doing, you're just making noise. Yeah. But now we are, we are wasting energy with that scream. Mm -hmm. So the moment you have taken small, small frequent fluids full of glucose or sugar, mm -hmm. you see now you have the energy. Yeah, I, I was taught to do that, but I used to vomit. It's expected. So basically, so the reason I was feeling that is because maybe I was going through some sort of maternal fatigue. Yeah, it's not just maternal fatigue. Mm -hmm. And even your glucose, now your sugar level are now going down. That because means now your body is depreciating and using the whole energy. The whole energy is concentrated on the uterus. So if a mom makes sure that she has these sugary drinks yeah. in between them, they won't feel what I was feeling. They won't feel that. They feel what they do. If, if they don't have any other underlying condition, they don't feel anything. They feel the same So moms, huh? See, I'm your plan, guys. Yeah. When you're packing for that, they, uh, when you're packing to go to the hospital, pack those sugary fluids. Sugar, 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 you can even have it. You can have glucose. You can even, when you're in the hospital, you maybe you'll be served with cocoa. Mm -hmm. Just take it frequently. Mm -hmm. Even if you're vomiting, you won't vomit 100% of it. Sure. You mm -hmm. just vomit like 50%. The other 50 will give you energy. Ah, you okay. Yeah. Nice. So now I'm here, I'm pushing. So until I was told the right way to push, baby was it coming out. And then at some point, I lost my contractions. Because I now the pain kind of disappeared at some point. I wasn't feeling anything. So could I have prevented that? Amma, that, is, that just happens to some women because they had to add some hormones to me. Whatever I always have. Was that because my control or maybe this? Okay, it's, it's a uterus. Uterus also is just a mercy. It's a soft mercy. Mm -hmm. So once it has contracted for a long time, it gets tired mm -hmm. and maybe it relaxes. Yeah. And now when you see that you are in labor mm -hmm. and all of a sudden the pain is gone, mm -hmm. we as your caregivers, mm -hmm. we have now to think outside the box. Mm -hmm. Not all women will give, will add them. It's called oxytocin. Mm -hmm. It's just a fluid that we add mm -hmm. just to stimulate the contractions. Mm -hmm. Not all of them will, will have to add that one. Mm -hmm. Because we have to assess it first. Okay. Because when uh, once you just get like now the labor is just gone off of labor once. It's hard to push without it. The yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Mm -hmm. And also that one communicates that maybe you are having a internet rupture. Oh. Wow. Yeah. So we have to assess first before mm -hmm. we start putting that fluid. Mm -hmm. And when you see now we are putting that fluid, you are meaning meaning that mm -hmm. our contractions are not adequate. Mm -hmm. We are not having the desired contraction that we want mm -hmm. to get this baby out. Mm -hmm. So the more you labor, the more the pain increases. The more you are fully dilated, the more that pain should increase. That's the climax. So a mom should be happy when the pain is increasing. Yeah, a mom should be happy when the pain is increasing. Because we don't need yeah. to do any intervention at that moment. Mm. We are okay. Yes. But when we now see now there is that pain and dilatation, we are not going <coughs> hand in hand. There's, mm. there's that number of contractions that we are expecting with each and every dilatation. Okay. Now you can't be at 8 centimeters and you have any contractions. Mm -hmm. There's something wrong that you have to intervene on that. So once you see you are continuing with labor and you're okay, the contractions are getting more and more frequent, mm -hmm. increasing in strength and intensity, we are okay, we are good. Okay. Yeah. So now here I am, I've pushed. Um, they, I was like I they did an episode for me. Yeah. We will I think that is going to be a different video because I know a lot of moms have a question like why do you have to cut me? Like if there is a lot of yeah. there's a lot of politics around that. But before we come to that, which is going to be a different video. So now baby comes out. Yeah. The first thing that comes out and I want to be <laughs> as gross <laughs> as possible because I mean this is giving but it's something very natural we should be proud of. I don't know why we <laughs> do what I did. I peed yeah. and I pooped. Yeah. And a lot of moms um, don't like to imagine that. But do you know how many moms I have to encourage to eat, the first mm -hmm. time moms? And they tell me, but I don't want to poop. I don't want to poop because it, it feels embarrassing. Yeah. So eh, pee came out, then poop came out, and then baby's head came out. When, when baby's head came out, I felt 
very relaxed. I signed off and I was like, oh no, I'm done. And then I would have started. You going to kill the baby? Is it true that if you stop pushing and you relax, you can chop the baby? Yama, it's a way of encouraging you. Okay, you see now, when you are pushing the baby, the baby's head is up. <coughs> then you decide to relax. Because it feels like you want to relax? Automatically, mm -hmm. I don't know how you are about it. Automatically. And I once, it, it happens, it happens yeah, actually. and you find now oh. that nurse is hanging on your leg again and again. So yes, that happened, yeah. Because already when you relax, mm -hmm. already it shows that now you've left all the muscles free. Now you just... So free. it's actually true you can kill your baby. Yeah, you can kill baby. And that's where most of the people, we used to lose a lot of babies. Really? Yeah, and that's where now you see, the only need where you see is to slap people. Which was so, not a good thing, was not a good So thing. if you're pushing your baby and you feel like baby is out and you want to relax, you need okay. to wait for the nurse to tell you. Okay. Uh -huh. You have to Whatever we always do is uh, uh -huh. once the head is out, uh, uh -huh. I always tell my mother uh -huh. taking a deep breath. Uh -huh. Because now we want to finish this journey. Uh -huh. You taking in a deep breath will enable your baby turn and it will also give me time to check whether there's a cord around the neck or there's something that can strangle your baby. So communication. Communication. Is communication. Once I tell you like taking a deep breath, mm -hmm. you're taking a deep breath, your muscles will be relaxed. Mm -hmm. Now then I tell you now, give me the last push mm -hmm. and the baby will be out. Okay. At that moment. Nice. So now I want to talk about